Word of Life Podcast with Prophet John Anoche is made possible by partners of John Anoche Ministries. Still to come on Word of Life with Prophet John Anoche. So if you don't believe the Word of God or any part of the Word of God, any fraction of the Word of God, you have not believed the Lord that God sent. Period. It doesn't matter the many things you believe. Some people believe only in prayer. They don't believe others. That's why there's no manifestation. That is why I say anything biblical in Christ Jesus, I believe. I used not to believe in oil. Now, the olive oil, the oil, the proper olive oil, not the ones people sell. Then he told me something. Take oil and go and wait on me this day. I will come and show you what you must do. I said, Lord, but I don't believe in it. Take oil. Go to the mountain. Poor flesh, don't listen to what your eyes are telling. Because what you see is what you believe. But what you have not seen is what you must believe, not what you see. I have sent men all right. But believe in the words that I have given you, which you don't see. That is why I stop. It doesn't matter your name. I respect you all right. But listen, when you speak contrary to the scriptures. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Now, can you sit in heavenly places? Amen. And let's briefly discuss these things. Thank you, Lord. The book of John, chapter number 5, verse 31 to 34. I'm talking about the fourfold witnesses. The fourfold witnesses of the Lord Jesus. Rabados says, The Lord has asked us to teach you about witnesses. So I know that you will, uh, you will start hearing something about the silver trumpet and the book of numbers, the, the golden trumpet, and uh, you know, it, it, ha, ha, ha. because in the midst of every congregation, there sounds a trumpet. Whenever people are about to possess a promise of God. There must be of necessity. There must be the sounding of trumpets. You have to understand the way God does his things. Anytime the people of Israel were going to cross to another dispensation, there was always sounded a trumpet. Whenever the people of God were going for a war, there was always the blowing of the horn, which is equivalent to the sounding of trumpets so whether the trumpet was one or two or three or four you know was determined by the kind of season that the people were in and the kind of people that the Lord needed to bring trumpets simply are messages of messengers so when you hear the trumpet it tells the people something and and it also informs the enemy of what season that they have entered into and what kind of victory awaits they are victorious people amen now remember that we are considered enemy by the devil and his kids amen amen and so when we the church of Jesus begin to see trumpets sounding before the army of God. It tells you something. Then we see the trumpets also begin to sound before the dreadful day of the Lord. It also means something. So you have to understand the dispensation of trumpets and the timelines within each event of sounding. And that is why before the war you will see the sounding of these trumpets. And before the dreadful day, you will also see the sounding of trumpets. And the Lord has been clear in the book of Revelation, chapter number 11, where he says that the two witnesses will be here and they will sound the trumpet before the army. But then he says, and I will anoint them again and they shall prophesy a thousand and he was specific about the days of their prophecy those are the prophecies that means it precedes the exact coming of the Lord Jesus that means it brings something so when you study the Bible what are the events that will happen 3.5 years before the Lord Jesus Christ interrupt that's serious I said that's serious I said that's serious that's serious I bless the name of the Lord for your life 
Hallelujah. Glory, shall glory. Glory. Shada Bahaya. Now, are you understanding something is clear here? Yes, sir. Okay, so listen, listen to what he's teaching. Uh, because um, when the Lord spoke, we discussed things where we will have to start from. So that you can have understanding and a deeper understanding of these things. And I tell you the truth that even in the um, Jewish tradition, they do not understand. They may understand the literal meanings of these trumpets. But what about the prophetic meanings and the mindset of God behind them? That is very deep. And that is what you pick up when we begin to teach the revelations of God. But here, I'm here to just make you understand the other side of witnesses. Because I'm starting from something called witnesses. So that you can understand what witnesses are. And that in the Bible, there have been so many witnesses. And you can understand. The fourfold witnesses have been taught by a lot of people. I just want to make you understand that these are things we call witnesses in the Bible. So you can understand. So when you see people carrying them, you know that this is it. The book of John chapter number 5, verse number 31 to 41. I want apostle to read all. Then I can start dividing them into several pieces. Amen. Amen. John 5, 31 through 41. Yes, sir. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Okay. There is another who bears witness of me. Yes. And I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. He has sent to John and he has borne witness to the truth. Yet I do not receive testimony from man. But I say these things that you may be saved. He was the burning and shining lamp and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than John's for the works which the Father has given me to finish. The very works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. But you do not have his word abiding in you because wh whom he sent him you do not believe. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive honor from men. I do not receive honor from men. Give Jesus a clap of your praise. We are done. Everything is here. Amen. Amen. Now Jesus made a pronounced um, a profound statement and said, I do not bear witness of myself. He said, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness of me. So anytime God sends a messenger, the messenger speaks about his words. He doesn't bear witness of himself. But where is witness of another? That means the Lord doesn't send messengers that abides alone. There is always one preceding the other and bearing witness for each other. I want you to understand something here. Now so, the 31 verse says, if I bear witness of myself, this is Jesus speaking, your Bible is in red. There is another who bears witness of me. There is another who bears witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. Now we are not just talking about the personality of the Lord Jesus Christ on whom there must be witnesses for. Understand that witnesses have been raised for him. So he's the bone of contention here when we are talking about who then is his witness. So he is talking about the fact that myself that I was sent a savior I do not bear witness of myself I do not bear witness of myself but another bears witness of me to you so I am not talking about even the person of Jesus because I've talked about him who he is, he is and where he came from and you know what he has become and who was what is going to become? Are you hearing my point? I've taught you that. At least some kind of level here. But he says that you, you have sent to John. So the people sent to another kind of messenger that the prophet revealed in the book of Malachi also, the book of Isaiah also, about the messenger who was supposed to come 
before the Lord Jesus. And when they said to him, you have sent to John and he has borne witness of the truth. So, so he has borne witness of the truth. Jesus said me. So in other words, aka Jesus. The truth is aka what? Jesus here. Because he says, he who, he said, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. So anything that the witness said about Jesus is called the truth. Now, and he's born witness to the truth. Then the truth, he personalizes the truth. Then he becomes a person. And now, then he says, yet I do not receive testimony from man. After the witness about me, I never saw people come and say, wow, you are the son of God. You are the one we are supposed to be waiting for. They did not give any testimony that we have seen the Savior. Why? Did Jesus raised this question here. He said, yet I do not receive testimony from man, but I say these things that you may be saved. So, even though he did not, he did not just say that so that, you know, he would just pamper himself. No, no. He just said that so that what? We will be saved. He's highlighting it, but the people still could not understand. Now, the 35 says this. He was the burning lamp, and Jesus is testifying of John. Remember, they sent people, the book of John chapter number 1, from the number 16 verse to about number 24 verse. They sent people, the Pharisees, the scribes, and the elders, the Sanhedrin, to go unto John and ask John that they, they were supposed to ask him three questions. They had watched in the prophets and they asked him three questions. That before the dreadful day of the Lord, there will be a release of certain prophets so, and certain people. So they asked him one question. Are you the Elijah? And then he declared, I am not the Elijah. Because we are talking about personification here. So, are you the Elijah? If he had said, I am the Elijah, then it means that he was seeing the baptism of the spirit of Elijah in himself. And so that he has, he's accounting, okay, unto himself as being Elijah. Meanwhile, is a baptism. When you are, the Holy Ghost lives in you and empowers you. So that is the way of God. Listen to the way of God. So if you ask, if I ask apostle, are you the Holy Ghost? And Apostle says, yes, I am the Holy Ghost. It will be wrong because we are asking you your person, your assignment. Because who, the one who empowers your assignment is the spirit that you have received. And so, the Holy Ghost is the one who works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. But you cannot, do you understand? You cannot personify him that I am the Holy Ghost. You cannot do that. Because when we do such in you in the spirit, we find you, your spirit yourself, the Holy Ghost Spirit also. And then even the spirit in which you walk in. To fulfill the assignment of God for his people. Alright. So that is why John said, the anointing you have received, the anointing that dwells in you, the anointing that is upon you. And the anointing is not the Holy Spirit, but he gives the anointing. So all spirit came from him. So when he comes, he has power to supply every spirit. Elijah was born by, Elijah was created and made by him. All the prophet spirits. And you have to understand that God keeps two prophets all the time with him. And these are the highest office of the prophetic. Now I'm not here to explain those things now. But I just want to make you understand something. Before anybody gets to God, there are two personalities that have covered the glory of God. That no man will see. So when they begin to reveal what they have covered, then people begin to see. So these are the exact witnesses of what they have covered. They see him as he is. We will get there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Never plan to be here. Amen. I'm just teaching what I'm asked to teach. Amen. The Bible says, Jesus began to talk about John. And he says, John is 
the burning light. He is the burning light. And you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. And anybody, whether Elijah himself or God, permits the spirit of Elijah and the power of Elijah to indwell in a man, they don't keep long. The people who always precede the coming of the Lord Jesus, whether for salvation or for judgment, they don't keep long. I check the timelines. You will see it. So when the time is up and they come around, the people must enjoy their burning light within the season that they are sent. Enjoy it whilst it lasts. For the best wine is reserved for the last. Give Jesus glory here. Now hear this one. Now when I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about the two witnesses, I'm talking about the fourfold witnesses. But I just want you to understand something. That you have sent to John and he bore witness up to the truth. Yet I do not receive testimony from man. But I say these things that you may be saved. He was the burning and shining lamp. And you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. Because every burning lamp gives light. And so you were willing for a time to enjoy his light. Not his lamp. For the lamp illuminates. So the lamp when it illuminates, the, what it produces is the light. Please, are you understanding me? Good. Tap deep into this revelation. That the lamp sits. That is why every ministry, every church, every living church, all the seven living churches of Jesus have a lamp. The bigger lamp. And these are the seven golden lamps. But each of the golden lamps have lampstands on which they sit. Before they are put in the bowl. And in the midst. Which is actually the lamp stand that the lamp stand sit on. Which is one. Because seven. Each of them doesn't abide alone. So you are not from the top burning onto the bottom. No. You are. It's like they are on the lamp stand. And then it coils into one. One kind of what? One kind of metal stick. All right. So, the Bible says Jesus is in the midst of them. He is in the midst of them. Then by each side of the seven golden candlesticks, sit two olive trees, potent olive trees. And the Bible talks about something profound, and which I'm not ready to review now. <clears throat> Time is not up. Now, the olive trees have receptacles, tubes, that is connected to the bowl in which the lampstand sit. And they drip off the oil from each of the lampstands from right to left. Drip them into the bowl. And inside the bowl is the oil that empowers the lamps to burn. To burn. So if you lift up prayer against the two olive trees. Because in the book of Revelation he said these are the two lampstands. And these are the what? Two olive trees. The Bible said it. So when you lift up prayer for them, you have disconnected yourself. You lift up prayer against them. They are works. It means that you are trying to tell the Lord to disconnect the oil. Why did he do that? That's a mystery that you have to ask the Lord. Labado Hoskide. And anything and everything that is represented in the Bible, this kind of symbols and imagery and all that, if it is not in the temple, it doesn't exist in the church. And it doesn't exist in the original. That is why when you see the, sil the, the, the silver trump, trump the, the silver trumpet, it doesn't mean in the temple there are silver, you don't even see silver in, in the sanctuary. It's the only gold. Bronze is seen on the outside, which we are not bronze. We are, we've given that to the what? The Gentiles. And that's what they are using now. That's the highest mountain they can occupy. But we go further. Not to be unclothed. To be clothed. With a heavenly what? Body. So we have gone into the sanctuary. So we are born there. That is where we see the seven golden candlesticks. The table of showbread. Is that not the place we see that? That's where we see the altar. The golden altar. That's where we see it. 
There's no when you are teaching the temple, no teaching anymore. Because the middle one has been broke. So we see him as he is. But for you to approach, you have to pass through the up fire to get to him. So let me go ahead. Then the Bible says this. And he was the burning and shining lamp and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than John. So John is the first witness of Jesus Christ. So one witness, first one. Now he said, I have greater witness than John. So he's going to the greater witness. Now, so the greater than John's witness is this one. So Jesus went, before Jesus ever started to speak the word of the Lord, John was his first witness. And John, as a messenger, qualified to be a messenger because of the spirit and power of Elijah. Otherwise, John, it is not in the timelines and events of God that anyone like that, so the person has to assume the grace of the Elijah to be able to qualify to witness about Jesus. Because their representation is, is not there in the temple. Because what is only in the temple is that all the time a trumpet will go before him. So in the dispensation of the law which was the shadow is supposed to be silver because silver is shadow. When the Lord started to mention the valuables of the earth, metals, he mentioned gold and silver. So wherever you see silver and you are comfortable with silver, the next level and the highest level you have to go is what? Gold. So he uses the gold as the shadow for the original is gold. So in the Bible you see silver trumpet and you see golden trumpet. Now so John here has been given as a witness but Jesus is introducing us to a greater witness and see the witness of Jesus Christ. The greater witness of Jesus. And the church we love to preach about John and condemn the greater witness. When I say it you hold your head. Now, let me introduce you, ladies and gentlemen, to the greater witness of Jesus Christ. But I have a greater witness than John for the works which, for the works which the Father has given me to finish. The very works that I do bear witness of me. So the works are greater witness than John. Can I begin to describe the works of Jesus Christ? The works of Jesus Christ was teaching, preaching, healing, miracles, signs and wonders, walking on the sea. These are all the works. Jesus said, if I don't do the works of my father, then you can stone me. But if I do the works of my father, then you cannot stone me. So forgiveness of sins are part of the works of the Lord. Do you know the works of the Lord? When you go into the temple, everything that is represented in the temple is the work of the Lord. When you are supposed to go before the throne of God, but there is a sin. And the, and the high priest offers oblation and atonement for the sins of the people is a work of God. Because when men pick up the tree of knowledge of good and evil and became sinful, God is the one that has to correct it because that tree was created and made by God. So in the process of doing it and correcting it, it is the work of God. That is why, that's why Jesus could not do the work except God himself came and lived in him. So the Bible said Jesus went into the wilderness 40 days, 49, but he returned in the power of the spirit. The first of all, the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus. Jesus as a child, 12 years, he was speaking with them, asking questions and all that. And then he was doing anything. Anything that he was doing was magical. It was power inherent that he was using. Oh, my so about the higher, no silver higher. But oh, when, when I say that, do you understand me? Jesus, it is believed in history books that he just could just make a mud and then he would blow the mud and became and it became a bed. Jesus could expand his father's carpentry stuff when he did it and it was not suiting to the thing, the measurement. He would just expand it. So he was using power. Hallelujah. But but Jesus, when he has to start the works of God and finish the works of God, the Bible says the Holy Ghost came upon him. Uh, whilst he was walking out of the water in baptism, the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus. Are you hearing me? The ones who are standing and saluting the master, the king of kings. Let something happen for your life in Jesus' name. So the first witness is John. Second witness, the works, the very works of Jesus Christ themselves. These are the very works of my father, God. 
So the works of the Lord Jesus is the works of God. Now, when I open this chapter up, then it introduces me to the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So when somebody says your gifts of the Holy Spirit is nothing, the person in fact has been insulted at the personality and the potent graces of God. Why? Because it takes gift to have grace. <laughs> if you are talking about grace without a gift, then it means it's not from God. Uh, then it's from some something some somewhere. But when you are talking about grace, it means you have the gift of eternal life, the, the first gift from God that he has given us. And then the other gift of the spirit represent uh, the gift of tongues. <laughs> then you are talking about the gift of healing. Be healed from your infirmities in the name of Jesus. Then you are talking about the gift of wisdom the gift of wisdom say for a few minutes let me continue thank you Jesus thank you Lord and the Bible says this so the very works themselves and that is what the church for years have fought against the works of God anyone who works the works of God is, not, is false not from God this cannot be when it is beyond the minds of ordinary men we begin to question when you shift somebody's bone you say mm, we have never seen anything like this it doesn't mean that what you have not seen is not with God for the Lord himself says your eye that you have has not yet seen whatever ear that you think you have you have not yet heard if you have a heart that quakes you have not yet perceived in your heart the things that God has already done the things he's already prepared you have not yet seen so little minds doubt the greatness of God I, I told you I said hold on hold on hold on hold on I never answer critics you wait until the word comes then you will find comfort in the word of God and when you find comfort in the word of God yourself, you will go before God and say, Father, I'm sorry for this. That is where conviction comes. It comes by truth. Amen. Amen. Now hear this one. So John said, the very words that I do, Jesus said, it, bear witness of me. So the words is a witness. The words. Say the words. The very words is a witness. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. So anybody that says God has sent me, but there are no works supernaturally following you, it's not God. How Jesus was anointed of the Holy Ghost, who went about doing good and healing all of them that were oppressed. Jesus was mighty indeed, and in what? In words. A man, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to us by God. With what? With miracles, signs and wonders. So the attestation on Jesus' ministry is the works. Where are your works if you are a child of God? You must not walk dry. There must be works with you. That proves the potency of the spirit that is in you. Carbody has it. Works, say works. Works. There must be works. The very works themselves. Now hear this way. The very works that I do bear witness of me. That the father has sent me. And this proves that anyone in that regard is coming from the father. So it proved Jesus. Now let's go. This, this is a greater witness than John. Which men were seeing physically and say, oh we believe you John. Because the way you were shouting and prophesying and scaring everybody. But Jesus said, it's a little witness. The greater witness. The very works themselves. Then let's see another greatness. And the father himself. Hear the word. The father himself. Who sent me. Has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice. At any time. Nor seen his form. And Jesus did not exaggerate. So what form did Abraham see? And what voice did Abraham hear? That means God who at who 
in time past spoke to us by to the fathers by the prophet so God never spoke to anybody but by prophets so when God when he decided to create and make the Lord who shall be the over all boss of the earth and gave him his throne he made two prophets to stand by him and in that shadow in that shadow you saw them as what something so when somebody is lying in the prophetic that I have seen this be it it presupposes the kind of assignment the person comes but when you look at the person he doesn't carry such an assignment in that particular order then he's lying he doesn't make mistakes are you hearing what I'm saying <laughs> I don't want to explain. I don't want you to get a clue. For example, we've seen that on the throne of Jesus Christ, or of the throne of the mercy seat, because Jesus, the one who is the expression of mercy to mankind, we see that there are two cherubs there. When a believer says, God sent a cherub to come and appear before me and speak to me of some matter that concerns little stuff pertaining to humans. And then they are making trivial stuff about this. Then it's a serious offense and error in the body of Christ and in the spirit. That's what I want to mean. Do you still understand it? Okay, good. So I don't want to. <laughs> because everything is in the representation of the, of, the, of the temple. And Moses, where did he know to do the temple? He went to heaven to check it out. And God told him, see to it that whatever you have seen here, when you go, you do the same thing there. Replicate. Replicate it. So he had to replicate everything. So it's already there. This is the original. So the father himself bears witness of his son. Greater witness. So God himself is a witness. Then, oh my father, thank you. Then the last witness here. So three witnesses. One, John. Two, the very works themselves. And then three, the father himself bears witness. Number four, let's go to four. He said, and the father himself who sent me has testified of me. You neither have heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. When Moses said, God, I can't go unless you go before him. He says, I will send my two angels. Every time he says, I will send my two days. I will send my two that. So Abraham truly heard the voice of God. And he was testifying to him that you are a friend of God. But the, the Lord directly did not speak to him. Somebody said, what about Moses? I, I said you want to put Moses in a category that you don't understand. Moses was said that I have made you a God. To your people. And so you literal understanding because he was born he still will function in the human domain. But when the guy went to be with the Lord small and started coming back, people were running away from him. So he had to veil his face so that the entire message of Moses is veiled. Because people were running away. So if you don't veil it and you open it like that, they will just die. But in Christ, the veil is taken away. I taught you about that. So when anybody tells you, oh, Old Testament rejected. In Christ, that veil is taken away. So in Christ, it is not rejected. It is taken away. Revelations are there, so it is taken away for you to see what the exact thing. So, what unto you feel in Christ, you don't take the veil away. You will still be like the blindness of what? The blindness in part has happened to Israel. You are blind. Thank you. The Bible didn't say that blindness in full. It said blindness in part. There is a part that they are blind of. That's what he's talking about. Now hear this way. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says this. But you do not have his word abiding in you because whom he sent, you do not believe. The reason why they did not hear his voice and all that he says because nor seen his form, but you do not have his word. Let me take the 20, 37 and 38 again. And the father himself who has sent me, who sent me, has testified of me. You, need, you have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. But you do not have his word. 
So you will hear the voice of God and God is telling you, I am the Lord. It's true. There's no angel God sent and the angel came and said, um, the angel will come and say, that's here the Lord. I am the Lord God Almighty, right? That's how they will speak. Check all the scripture, you see it. And the Lord said, all the voice they heard, it was not directly him, but the messenger. So a messenger who abided in the spirit. That's what the Bible says. If the ministration of angels. That's why you have to understand what angels in the domain of men do not have wings. And I have not seen one yet. But when you want to talk about cherubs and seraphs, they are different classes. You might call them angels, but that is what in the domain of men, the prophet even saw and called them. So when you see the book of Revelation, you see that it was like angels playing roles there. But the Bible says angels don't carry the gospel now after dispensation of Christ. So who then are they? But you have to understand that because of the interpretation of men, they put it there like that. Malachi. Messenger. Thank you, Father. Now hear this word. But you do not have his word abiding in you because whom, you, whom he sent, you did not believe. So if you don't believe the word of God, or any part of the word of God, any fraction of the word of God, you have not believed the Lord that God sent. Period. It doesn't matter the many things you believe. Some people believe only in prayer. They don't believe others. That's why there's no manifestation. That is why I say anything biblical in Christ Jesus, I believe. I used not to believe in oil. That the olive oil, the oil, the proper olive oil, not the ones people sell. Then he told me something. Take oil and go and wait on me this day. I will come and show you what you must do. I said, Lord, but I don't believe in it. Then he said, I believe in myself, John. Take oil. Go to the mountain. Poor flesh, don't listen to what your eyes are telling. Because what you see is what you believe. But what you have not seen is what you must believe, not what you see. I have sent men all right, but believe in the words that I have given you, which you don't see. That is why I stop. It doesn't matter your name. I respect you all right. But listen, when you speak contrary to the scriptures, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not insult you, no, but when I'm teaching, I'll teach it. And I don't teach it in anger or in malice or in anything. I teach it in truth. Not to get applause from men, no. Because the scars are too much. The applause of men will heal my wounds. Amen. I'm convinced that death, wounds, will never separate me from the love of Christ. Amen. I have been prepared for this already. Amen. Thank you, Father. Now, hear this one. But he said, you do not believe. Him you do not believe. The 39 introduces us to another thing. He said, you search the scriptures. For in them, for in them, you search the scriptures. For in them, you think you have eternal life. So the people of the Jews and the Israelites who were hearing from Jesus, they thought they had eternal life already. Because they've said carefully the scriptures. They were reputed for the law. Yeah, about the host. Yeah. Almost being the rabbis. So they thought that was it. Jesus said, You search the scriptures. In them, you think you have eternal life. But the scriptures are called, they are dead. Ha, yeah, This is big. They are dead. They, right? They, he said, these are they which testify of me. The graphic representation of things. Graphe, scriptures. Now, the book in heaven that this, the Bible is within. The Bible simply means book. Divine book. book. But the exact name of the word of God is called scriptures of truth 
scriptures of truth. The prophets have revealed. The apostles have revealed. It's called scriptures of truth. It's not called Bible. In heaven there's nothing called Bible. It's scriptures of truth. So this book, which is, the word Bible is, you know, a language of another country which is translated book. So Bible is book. Bibliology is the study of book. Or the study of the holy book. But whenever anybody who is spiritual spoke in the Bible, it was Holy Scriptures says. The Scriptures themselves says. Scriptures. And the Scriptures is a combination of things. The law is part of Scriptures. Because when they were searching the Scriptures, the Gospel had not been written yet. The, the, the epistles were not there yet. Revelation was not there yet. So what were what was Jesus talking about that they have searched? They have searched the books of the beginning, the books of the law, and the books of the prophet. These are all scriptures. Scriptures. So when you go into the scripture of truth, when you see a king who played a role for the dispensation of God but was not godly, he is still there. Why? Because to fulfill what is in the scripture of truth. So when you see somebody like Nebuchadnezzar, the Lord says, I raised him up. And when you want to understand, it's very profound. He says, the day that he thought what he was doing was of himself and ascribed all the glory to a God somewhere. Then I made him know that there is a God who controls all the affairs of humans. I can show you the scriptures, but we don't have the time. Now hear this. You search the scriptures. Scriptures. For in them, you think you have eternal life. So they thought they have their own eternal life in their way. It's the same bait that people are believing today. That there are so many ways of going to God. It's not only Jesus Christ. So you don't have to be a Christian. It's deception. They have searched through the scriptures. So they think. As for me, I don't believe in Jesus. So, but I believe in the... Old Testament way. So I'll still be killing sheep and goats and all that. That's what. It's a deception. You think in them that you have eternal life. But the scriptures are there. You, when you search, you didn't, you didn't complete it. If you had completed the searching of the scripture, you would have seen that all of them that you tried to worship, they were actually pointing to me. So when you go to the washing of hands with the blood and articles of gold and all that and the order, everything was pointing to Jesus. Shall glory. When you went and he saw that the high priest was wearing a robe and the robe the people must contribute uh, their, their daily earnings and, and buy the linen and buy the woven, skillfully woven tunic and uh, the sash and, and, and the breastplate of righteousness and the blue garment and, and all the effort and all that. When you saw all of them contributing money and you saw all of them bringing the topaz, the jasper, the jacinth and all the emerald and, and all those kind of precious minerals that are 12 and inscribed at its base in, you know, in a golden Base sitting on the breastplate of righteousness and the satraps and uh, you know moving from the breastplate to the right and left onto the shoulders and then the black onyx stone sitting in the base of a gold ah I went to the back and all that and there was no inscription and all that when you see that in the high priest that a garment when someone is not holy but when he wears he's about to wear a garment but he has to be sanctified so that he can qualify to wear a garment so when you see that that Garment, ha! Hey, a human who is not qualified, who is dirty, who is sinful, ha! but he's going to wear a garment, and when he wears that garment, ha, by, 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 by the efficacy ha, ha, of the garment, he can appear before ha, the mercy seat of God and do something for the people of God who are dirty. Ah, he himself, when he goes there with that garment, he dies. But because by virtue of that garment, he qualifies to go. Ha, ah, that garment, when you see it, what tells you? Ha, Jesus is telling you that when you see that garment in those stages, it represents me. It represents me. Because in them, these are they which justify of me. 
The Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus is bigger than your head. Jesus is bigger than your ways. Jesus is bigger than ever you think. The world cannot comprehend. Jesus said it. He said the spirit of truth whom you cannot see. He abides in you. But you because he abides in you, you know him. He will help you search through the scriptures. And he will remind you of the things that I've told you that you don't remember. I came to declare upon somebody. I came to declare upon somebody. That you have a greater witness. You have a greater witness. When that is why when you love the scriptures, Jesus loves you. Because this, this is the greatest testimony about Jesus. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Give him praise and glory. That's why when people are talking about it and they miss it, we just see it. Because why? The scriptures are so connected that when you miss one, it makes all the rest of the revelations false. You may be you, are, you may not be false, but the interpretation you see that, that you don't know the lines are, which are falling into pleasant places. <laughs> For if a line doesn't fall into a pleasant place, it doesn't it doesn't work. Uh, it becomes disastrous to the place. Uh, if you teach a revelation that is wrong and erroneous to the church, it destroys the church. Uh, such as rapture, that is why we are bold in teaching it. So when somebody invests his time and resources in the word of God, no wonder the greater witness. So when you're going to win souls, you're going to tell them of the word, Jesus, who is containing the scriptures of truth. Because the scriptures contains the word of God. And that's what testified of him. That's what testified. The fourfold witness. Now remember the scriptures themselves, they work by the spirit. And the spirit works by scriptures. So when you enter into this dimension, this is the last day testing that I said is the spirit word which is the representation in the temple. One from the word moves into the spirit. One from the spirit moves into the word. Period. I'm done with revelation. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. By this revelation be exalted above measure. Be catapulted to another realm of glory. A higher realm of glory. Be from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. That because of the word you are cleansed in the name of Jesus. You are cleansed by the word which have been spoken unto you today. That you know that you have the great. You know. The, the, you know the, the most profound aspect of us. We have. We have. Three witnesses living in us. So when I'm teaching you. If I'm teaching you by the virtue of the fact that I am John and not that my mother gave birth to me somewhere, then, and I'm testifying of myself, then it's a testimony of self. Person. But if I'm teaching and the Spirit of God speaks to me about myself, it is up to you to identify that this one I spoke by the Spirit. The same way, Jesus, you will check the scriptures. There were one or two words he spoke about himself in the Word of God, but it was by the Spirit. That is why he said, the father himself who lives in me, which you have not heard before, he has bear witness of me. Where did he bear witness of me? He spoke through him to the people. It's up to us to go deep and deeper to know and discern which voice is speaking. Because the father that he said, you have not seen before, you have not heard his voice, but abides in you, he will witness of him. He, Jesus said it. When he comes, he will testify of me and bring you to mind the things you don't remember and reveal many secret and hidden things to you. That's what Jesus said. Now, the scriptures too, he has given you the opportunity. He says, I will write them in your heart and I will write them in your mind. The tables of your heart or the tablet of your heart and your mind. So we are supposed to imbibe the scriptures. And the Bible says, Jesus said, and I will come into you. And, my, and he is the one called eternal life. So the eternal life which was with the father. So the glory upon us Christians is that we have the eternal life. Which Jesus took out of himself and took it and brought it to the altar. So that his father would distribute it to us. So as many as his father will call, they are the ones who will receive eternal life. That is the meaning of this. Not as many as you think he will call. But as many as the Holy Ghost will call. 
he sees them with his life the life he put on the altar he shared his life that's what it means so that when Jesus personally when you see him here he doesn't contain his life what he, he contains is the glory of his father his father is in him but his life is on the altar supplying to the people that he has chosen so you came from his blood you were born out of his blood and it is that what the cross procured. The cross procured it. The cross is not salvation. The cross procured. The cross was the price. On it is when the blood was shed. So that the reason why the cross is dangerous is because when you go to the cross you see the blood. When they nailed him, pa! Every blood he gushed out poof, to the cross, and anything the blood tasted became dangerous. That is why when the blood, there was a drop of the blood upon the grounds, it parted the whole places, and there were egg tremors, and then it caused the people who were dead long time ago to resurrect. And the people resurrected so much so that they came to the house and said, give me water to drink. You don't remember me. I am your great, great grandfather. I was with Abraham and I've come home. I am passing through this place to the Holy Land. Don't you read that in the Bible? Oh, my father. That is what we call the efficacy of the blood. Thank you, Jesus. So the cross became an exchange of life. That is where Jesus nailed our sinful life onto. And then on that cross, he took the life of the Father and gave it to us. So he nailed his own life to the cross. That the Father would take it and put it on the altar for us. And he took all our sins, a sinful life, onto the cross. So the cross is a place where that work is done by God. It's the place of the ashes. The gold gota. Place of skull. It's a place where all the goats and the sheep for sacrifices are killed. That was the wood that they put on the ground and they killed all the sacrifices for sin on it. Outside the camp. So it was the place where they let the escape goat to go. The scapegoat was left to go. So the, the scapegoat was supposed to escape through that. That was the black goat that was made to go to the wilderness. Then, the one that was supposed to be used for the atonement, we killed him there. Sacrifice the whole and burn everything there. That was Jesus' body. Sacrificed on the wood. And the wood was a very hard wood, acacia wood. God for wood. So the ark of the tabernacle that they did when you see the ark of the tabernacle inside the ark was the word of testimony have you seen it? and then the rod and the rod budded and that rod is Christ right? so the metamorphosis changes so inside is where the spirit of God came to so when they carry the ark wherever they go to you are in trouble now the symbol of the cross within the ark was this when they were scroll, when they were fixing the, the, the career the bars that cross each other on the four area so that the priest who carries the ark will carry one, two, three, four side they put rings here rings there and then they push the thing through then the ones that are here they push it halfway in halfway out so the nail that they fix on the thing they always punch the nail halfway in, halfway out. So Jesus, when he was on the cross, they didn't nail everything against him. They nailed the, some of the nails, the six inches, halfway in, halfway out. Six inches, halfway in, halfway out. That is why on the third day he has to come out. So when you check the tabernacle, oh my God, if you like go and read about it, check it, you see that there were instructions of even how to hammer it. <laughs> So when you read the Bible, it says, do it. It's a perfect hammer. Hammer it halfway in, halfway out. You will check revelations of Jesus Christ. And that 
cross. When they were carrying the ark, it was part of it. So today he said, carry your own cross. Because the Israelites, if they wanted to win wars, they carried that ark. If they don't carry, wherever they put it, the people prosper there. So wherever you go in the company, the worldly places, carry your ark. You are an embodiment. You are the ark. You are the ark. You are the body in which the rod is, that budded. You know, the word of God inside. The scroll, the two tablets of stones. Now, in it is revealing the gospels and the epistles and revelation. The shadow reveals all of that. Understand the word. That's what it means. When you are studying this, how can God not speak to you? I bless you in Jesus' name. The body of Christ, we need to study. <laughs> this is not even deep. We are the deepest. Lubaka idamanaka. Ayiwa ashis katanata. Liba abuambe kevasata. Lagada kata. Same is said and is true on the altar. So that the altar belongs to him. So come boldly to my throne. But you have to come boldly to the throne. Through the altar. That's where you understand sacrifices. You love the Lord. You'll be willing to share. Even the Bible says, the body that you have. You see, Jesus requires everything of us so much so that even including our body, he says. He says that. He says in the book of Romans chapter number 12. He says what? Present your body as what? Present your body as what? And, and, and when you present it as a living person, it becomes what? It becomes holy. Then it is what? Acceptable. It is what? Your reasonable. Uh, it's your reason what? Your reasonable service. Your. I think that one. Don't be saying, I'm going to be a Christian. And no cry, you're reasonable service. So when we say, let's go to a prayer meeting, you don't say, oh, I'm tired. Let, let's go to the meeting, uh, you know, the committee meeting. Say, I don't say, I'm tired. Let, Every responsibility given unto you, eh, you are supposed to present your body into it as a reasonable service. You don't give excuses. So when it comes to even service in the kingdom, in the kingdom, if you don't understand this, you will never understand service. A reasonable service. A reasonable service. So the people you say, oh, well, yes, because you, you have presented your body a living sacrifice. Holy acceptable. This is the perfect will of God. When I'm teaching some things, you see that the master himself stands in our midst. But my time is up. Dear Lord Jesus, let these issues in the world be solved. And we will explain you to the people. We will teach you to the people. Oh my God. The purpose of which you sent us, it shall be accomplished. It shall be bad or shabba. It shall be done. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Give him praise. We trust you've enjoyed today's broadcast. For more information, visit www.johnanarchyministries.org www.worldwidewordministries.org or call 0302-507-154 or 0540-996-670. This broadcast is made possible by partners of John Anarchy Ministries.